Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a cartoon portrait from a photo without the use of the oil paint filter nor any of the filters in Filter Gallery. Before we begin, if you enjoy my tutorials, please hit that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new ones. Open a photo of someone that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The first step is to crop our photo. Open your crop tool. Click the clear button to clear your crop settings. For the width and height, type in 1500 pixels each. And for the resolution, type in 72 pixels per inch. Make sure you check delete crop pixels. Drag the corners of the crop's bounding box to size and position your subject. Then press enter or return or click the check mark at the top. To fit it back onto your canvas, press Ctrl or Command 0, or you can zoom in or out incrementally by pressing Ctrl or Command and the plus or minus key on your keyboard. Next, we'll separate our subject from its background by making a selection around our subject. There are many ways to do this, and your choice should depend on the characteristics of your photo. For this example, I'll use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using this tool as well, make its radius 10 or 15 pixels. Drag the tool over your subject to select it. To remove selections outside your subject, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. To check it, press Q on your keyboard to see it as a quick mask. Revert it back into a selection by pressing Q again. To refine its edges, go to Select. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2015.5, click Refine Edge. If you're using a later version, click Select and Mask. If you prefer to use Refine Edge instead of Select and Mask, shift click Select and Mask. I did in-depth tutorials on both of these filters, so if you'd like to watch them, click their respective links in this video's description below the video. Check Smart Radius. This enables the brush to detect hard and smooth edges. Brush over the edge of the hair. Check Decontaminate Colors to prevent background colors from leaching into the edge of your subject. Keep its default amount to 50% and output it to a new layer with Layer Mask. We'll convert our image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. I'll reduce the shadows to zero so we can see how it affects our image. Dragging the shadows slider to the right lightens the shadows based on their surrounding pixels. For this image, I'll make the amount 10% and the highlights 20%, but feel free to adjust these amounts for your image. Go to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. Make the amount 150% and the radius 2 pixels. To automatically enhance our image's brightness and contrast, click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Curves. We want the Curves Adjustment Layer to affect only our subject, but because Adjustment Layers affect all the layers below them in the Layers panel, we'll want to clip it to our subject. To do this, click the Clipping Mask icon or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Alt click or option click auto, which opens the auto color corrections options window. By default, the enhance brightness and contrast option is ticked. Click OK. To save space in the layers panel, we'll place our subject and the curves layer into a folder. To do this, shift click your subject to make it active as well and press Ctrl or Command G. I'll name the folder Subject. We'll create a new layer below it by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. In this empty layer, we'll create our background. Click the foreground color 
and pick a color for your background. You can always change it later if you want. Once you pick your color, click OK or press Enter or Return. Now, our foreground color is the color we just picked. To fill the empty layer with that color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Next, we'll add an inner circle to the background to make our cartoon pop. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Open your Elliptical Marquee tool and go to the center of your subject. Press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift and then drag out a circle approximately this size. To move it in any direction, press any of the arrow keys on your keyboard. Click your foreground color again and pick a color for the inner circle. Fill the selection with the color you picked and deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Let's group these layers into a folder using the same steps that you used for the subject folder. Name this folder Background. Temporarily hide the background folder and make your subject folder active. Above it, we'll create a composite snapshot of our subject by pressing Alt Ctrl Shift E on Windows or Option Command Shift E on a Mac. Normally, I'd choose to make our subject into a smart object instead of making it into a composite snapshot, but the next effect doesn't work on smart objects. Hide the subject folder and go to Filter, Stylize, and Diffuse. Tick Anisotropic and click OK. So you can see my image closer, I'll press Z to open my zoom tool and drag it over an area. As you can see, there are distracting horizontal patterns that appear over the subject. You'll have these on your image as well. We'll get rid of them using the following steps. Go to Edit, Transform, and Rotate 90 degrees clockwise. We'll repeat the anisotropic diffuse filter by pressing Alt Ctrl F on Windows or Option Command F on a Mac. Go back to Edit, Transform, and Rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Again, repeat the diffuse filter. Repeat these steps again. And then one last time. Convert your image into a smart object so we can continue to add filters to it non-destructively. Make your background folder visible. Next, we'll tighten up the edges of our subject. Control click or command click your subject to make a selection of its shape. Go to Select. Modify and Contract. Contract it one pixel. Go back to Select, Modify and Smooth. Smooth it five pixels. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to our subject. Make the subject active. Go to Filter, Noise, and Reduce Noise. Make the Strength 10, Preserve Details 100%, Reduce Color Noise 0%, and Sharpen Details 80%. Remove JPEG Artifact is checked. Go back to Filter, Sharpen, an unsharp mask. The amount is 100%, the radius is 2 pixels, and the threshold is 0 levels. Next, we'll smooth out the skin. Go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. The radius is 30 pixels, and the threshold is 20 levels. We'll brighten the shadows again by going to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. Make the shadows amount 20% and 
and the highlights 10%. Next, we'll make it pop more by increasing its contrast. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Then clip it to your subject. Drag the Input Highlights slider to approximately where the histogram starts to rise and the Input Shadow slider to a point where you like the look of the shadows. Next, we'll add a thin border around the perimeter of our subject. Make a new layer and control click or command click the layer mask to make a selection of its shape. Go to Select and click Select in Mask or Shift click it to open Refine Edge. Smooth it 50, make the contrast 100%, and shift the edge minus 5%. Go to Edit and Stroke. Make the width 6 pixels. Click the color box and click the darkest color of your image to pick up that color. Make its location Center and click OK. Then deselect it. Lastly, we'll make our colors more vibrant. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Vibrance. Drag the Vibrance all the way to 100%. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.